In this chapter, we'll get set up with Telerik UI for .NET MAUI and start integrating it into our project. There are a few different ways to install Telerik UI for .NET MAUI into your solution, and I'll cover them in the installation lesson. I'll walk you through the solution structure of our app so that you're familiar with what we're building. Understanding the structure of our project will be essential as we start incorporating Telerik UI components. And finally, in this chapter, we'll start using Telerik UI by adding a control to our project. So without further ado, let's dive into Telerik UI for .NET MAUI and start building. Welcome to the installation lesson. I'm going to assume you already have Windows 11 installed, Visual Studio, and you already have either your Android emulator set up, or you're using Windows subsystem for Android, or you have Visual Studio connected remotely to a Mac to deploy to iOS simulators. Alternatively, if you don't have any of those installed, you can develop .NET MAUI apps using Windows only. Now, there are several different installation approaches that you can use. Here on the Telerik.com website, I'm going to go to Products, and then you can find UI for .NET MAUI either under Mobile or under Desktop. They're going to lead to the same documentation. Head on over to Docs and Support. Scrolling down a little bit, you'll find the Getting Started section. If you click on that, it'll take you right to the installation steps. Now, I'm going to show you how to set up a NuGet feed for your Telerik products and how to install the Telerik UI for .NET MAUI using NuGet. If you are interested in using the MSI file, which is the installation file, you can follow the steps in the documentation to do that. This will require you to download the installation file from your account downloads. You'll also find the first steps with NuGet section here. This is the instructions that we're going to follow. And specifically, you want to find this path right here, this URL, which is the endpoint that we're going to connect to and set up with Visual Studio. So I'm going to copy this link. And let's head over to Visual Studio under Tools, NuGet Package Manager. We're going to go to Package Manager Settings. And then under Package Sources, you'll find one or two sources already pre-configured. You're going to hit this plus button to add a new source. Now that you have that source selected, you can go down here to name, and I'm going to call mine Telerik. And under source, I'm going to paste in that URL that I just copied. Make sure it starts with HTTPS and ends in index.json. V3 is the current one as of the recording of this video. Now, you're not done yet. Make sure you hit the update button so that these changes take effect and you'll see Telerik and the URL right here in the list. Then you can click OK. And this is a pretty simple installation method that I prefer. Now, if you create a new project as a test and we'll create a MAUI app, it doesn't matter what you call it. Uh, this is just a sample so I can show you what happens when you try to add a package from the Telerik source. So here's a brand new blank MAUI project. And I'm going to right click on the project, head on over to Manage NuGet Packages. And now under Package Sources, you'll see all your sources, including the one we just added, which is Telerik. So I'm going to select that. And the first time you use this, it's going to ask you for your username and password. I like to select Remember My Password so I don't have to enter it every time. And I'm going to click OK. At this point, you can click on the Browse tab up here and browse all the products available for you to install from the Telerik source. We're going to search for MAUI here. And there it is, Telerik UI for MAUI. If you click on that and click on install, this will install MAUI. Of course, you're going to have to say OK here for the changes to take effect and click on accept for the licensing terms. And now MAUI is installed and you can check that under the installed tab right over here. Make sure you have this installed before we proceed to the next lesson and download the project code as the Telerik UI for MAUI package will be required for that. You might want to follow along as we progress through this course. And in order to do that, I highly recommend you get two projects. They're available on GitHub, and you can download or clone them locally. The first project is RPS Tracker MAUI. And this is the RPS Tracker application that's the starting point of this course, and it does not have any Telerik UI in it just yet. If you want to follow along and install the Telerik UI packages, this is the one you're going to start with. The second project is RPS Tracker MAUI Telerik. And this is the final state of our application, or the goal that we're trying to get to at the completion of this course. This version does have all the Telerik UI controls that we'll be using for our application augmentation, and you can look at it for reference if you run into any trouble. 
I recommend you clone or download this one as well, just so that you have it available locally and you can always run it. Once you clone these projects, you can open them up in Visual Studio. And this is the RPS Tracker MAUI project that does not have Telerik UI built into it yet. It does have a simulated backend inside the BL folder here. You don't need to deal with that at all. Everything is already set up for you, as well as the core models. This is to simulate your database and your data structures. When you're building your project, you're going to be dealing with the views folder, the view models folder. And we'll also be looking at Maui program to configure the Telerik solution. We'll look at app.xaml as well. If we have a quick look at NuGet packages here, you'll see that we already have community toolkit.maui installed, which is a Microsoft package, and community toolkit.mvvm. We're not going to go through these in this course, but just be aware that we are using these NuGet packages that don't come with MAUI by default, and these are not provided by Telerik. They're just a convenience layer that's provided by the community. MVVM specifically allows us to easily use the model view view model design pattern for structuring our applications. All our view models will live in the view models folder and all our views will live in the views folder. To run the application, you would simply select the emulator or whatever device you want to run it on. You can run this remotely on iOS if you have a Mac connected or you can run it locally on Windows. Android emulator or Windows subsystem for Android. I'm going to select Windows subsystem for Android in this case and kick this off to show you what this app does. It'll take just a moment to build. And when the app starts up, you'll see the home page. Here we have a drawer navigation where we can go to the dashboard page. And the dashboard page is pretty simple right now. We're going to enhance this with Telerik UI. Here you have a number of open issues and a number of closed issues. And these displays are filtered by the last three months, six months, or one year. You can also go to the backlog page to see the actual items. Here we can add a new item, item one, for example, and it'll show up in the list. If you navigate to a single item, you'll see the details page where you can change the type of the item it is, the priority, whether the item is closed or open, you can assign an estimate to it, and you can change the item's title. Let's call this one Alex's item. And we can save this. And when we go back, you'll see that this is called Alex's item. Now, if we go back to this item as well, you'll see that there are two tabs at the top. Now, this is currently a custom made visual structure where we can switch tabs like this, but we're going to be replacing that with a tab view that comes with Telerik UI. And on the tasks tab, we can add a new task, or we can go through existing tasks and delete them if we don't need them anymore. Now, along with this solution, I recommend that you also keep another instance of Visual Studio open with the completed solution. This solution already has Telerik UI for .NET MAUI installed and the components installed with it. Here, if you run this project, you'll see on the dashboard that we have the chart now that also can be filtered by range, three months, six months, or one year. On the backlog page, we now have a grid component that's going to be filterable and display a little bit more information. If we go into a single item, you'll see now we have a data form control. We'll talk more about that and what that is. And we have two good looking tabs up here that switches between the details form and the tasks pane, but the functionality remains exactly the same. So now that you have both of these solutions installed, we're ready to try things out. All right, I bet you're really anxious to get started. First of all, I want you to make sure that you have configured your package manager source. Let's go to package sources and make sure that Telerik is configured. If it's not, then go back to the installation lesson and make sure that you have the Telerik NuGet source listed in your package sources. Now open up the project that does not have Telerik UI implemented and right click on the project, go to manage NuGet packages, select the Telerik package source, and uh, you'll see that under installed, if you search for MAUI, Telerik UI for MAUI will not be listed here. But if we go to browse and you search for Maui, then Telerik UI for Maui is listed. Click on that to select it and then click on install. This will get Telerik Maui installed. Just click OK here and agree to the terms. 
and you can close out this window for the project properties. Now, first thing you should do is go to Maui program. Here, where we're configuring the application, we need to ensure that the Telerik helper is actually added here. So right where we're configuring builder, we can add dot use Telerik. You can use Visual Studio's helper to add the using statement automatically, which is telerik.maui.controls.compatibility. This will make Telerik UI for Maui available to the rest of your application. Now, I'm going to run this very quickly and show you what we're going to add. By the way, just a little side note here. I've done some research on what emulator slash simulator to use to have the fastest iteration experience. This is more related to mobile development in general, but I found that uh, deploying to Windows is the fastest and then deploying to Windows subsystem for Android is the second fastest. I like deploying to WAS or Windows subsystem for Android because it gives me a closer experience to what it would be like using on a mobile device. Once in a while, I will be using the Android emulator in this course as well, just to make sure things are properly aligned. All right, let's have a look at our backlog page. And we have this little add button. And here I have a couple of fields and I have this save button. This is the add new item pop up, which is a modal dialogue. And we can find that in our views folder, backlog pop ups, and then add item pop up. Here it is. This is the XAML for it. If we go down to right over here, we have this button. This is the save button, the same one that we see right here. I'm going to replace this button with a Telerik button. And I'm going to take you through my process of doing that. The first thing I always start out with is documentation. So I'm going to go to documentation and then controls. And then I'll find the control I want to use. In this case, I want to use the button. I go to overview. And this shows us a little preview of what the buttons look like and how to implement a button. So the next step is getting started with the Telerik UI for .NET MAUI button. Or you can just go to getting started directly right here in the navigation. Let's see how to get started with it. First, we need to add the control right here, which is Telerik colon rad button. Now, I like to add the namespace first because without this namespace, things won't work. But let me show you what would happen if you add the button directly from the documentation and right into your view. I'm going to paste that code right here. Okay, so this is the Telerik rad button. Instead of click me, the text will say save. And we get a little message from Visual Studio that says the type Telerik rad button was not found. And that's because the Telerik namespace needs to be registered with this view. So we're going to go all the way up to the top here. And in the root element, we have a bunch of namespaces already defined, we're going to add the Telerik namespace there as well. So we can reference those components. And here is that namespace, I can copy this, let's go back to the code. And really anywhere you can just paste that in, I'm going to do it at the end, just like that XML namespace colon Telerik. And now that points to the correct schema. And if we go down to where we have the button now, you'll see that there is no more error in Visual Studio. At its simplest, if we take away all the properties and just leave the text, you should be able to see that new button there. And I'm going to leave the old button there for comparison. Let's have a look at them together. So I'm going to navigate to backlog, and then open up my add modal dialog. And here you'll see two save buttons. This is the original save button. And this is the new Telerik rad button. You can see that the rad button gets the native material look. If you click on it, you don't need to even do anything in order for it to inherit that look. All right, now we're going to implement the clicked handler, I'm going to say clicked, and then I can have Visual Studio automatically create that for me. So I can say new event handler, or I can use one that is already created. For example, save clicked, Visual Studio determines that that matches our signature for the click button. But I'm going to create a new event handler here and have Visual Studio create that in the code behind. Let's unroll this XAML file. And we'll take a look at the XAML.cs file, which is the code behind for this pop up. And if we go down a little bit, and we'll see that this was just created by Visual Studio automatically. And the signature is exactly the same as the old signature. Now, not all signatures are going to match just like this one for the components we're going to replace and their events. But in this case, it does match. So I'm going to actually just reuse the save clicked event. Let's copy that event name and go back to the pop up. And I'm going to paste that in here. 
we can remove the old button and let's go ahead and restart. Once the app restarts, let's head over to our ad dialog. And now if I add an item, I can click on save and there's our new item. So that's how easy it is to add a Telerik UI for Maui control into our application. Now that you got your hands a little bit dirty, I want to show you one very important resource that I use all the time, and it's helped me out quite a bit in my Telerik UI for Maui development. And this is the sample application that contains all the controls in a variety of settings. If you go back to the documentation, you can click on sample applications. There are a couple of other sample applications you can use here, but the one that has all the demos of controls is this controls sample app. Click on that. This will give you some information on that and what it contains. What you really want is this .NET Maui samples repository on GitHub so that you can run this locally. I'm going to open this up and you can go to the top level repository directory clone the repository or download it, uh, get it to your computer one way or another, and then open the solution up in Visual Studio. You'll see how this project is configured. You can see that in the Maui program, they're also using use Telerik, of course, that's where it all begins. And then under examples is where you'll see a lot of the code, specifically the code that you'll see in the running app. If we take a look at the button control, which we've just implemented in the previous lesson, you'll see that we have a first look example and how that button was implemented. These examples are a little bit more extensive and they show off a little bit more of each component than what we've done. So it'll give you a good pool of knowledge to pull from and be able to copy and paste if you really need to do that. There's no shame in it. You can do it. I do it all the time. <laughs> now to run this application, it's the same thing. You just first build it and then you can run it in the emulator. This time I'm going to use my Pixel 5 Android emulator to run this. Here is the sample app and you can see that all the controls are available here. For example, if we take a look at button again, this will allow you to preview what some of the available button configurations might look like. Here you have some image buttons, you have some buttons with a border, circular buttons with icons inside of them, and even vertical buttons. There is uh, a ton to look through here, including charts, there's the data form, the data grid, and all the other ones that you might want to look at. And the sample code is available to you in the solution. Very useful thing to download and run side by side as you're developing just to have that reference. 